Hello, welcome to the Thursday, August 2nd, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today we got a smishing attack to start out with. Smishing is derived from phishing and SMS, essentially a phishing message sent via SMS. In this particular case, the message announced that the victim's Facebook message was deleted for being inappropriate. And of course, the message then offers a link to Facebook. So the idea here is that the user will click on the link and then, of course, they will receive a login page that looks just like Facebook's, and that's where they lose their credentials. If they enter credentials, whether correct or not, they will be redirected to the authentic Facebook page, which, of course, will let them in then once they authenticate with their Facebook credentials. There are a couple things that make this particular message a little bit special. First of all, the attacker managed to register a host name starting with Facebook. This host name was registered under a university domain in Bulgaria. Secondly, they actually do a little bit input validation on the fake login form. If you are entering credentials that are syntactically wrong, meaning your user ID or email address is not valid, based on the format, then you get a login failed message. Sometimes I hear the advice to enter just some random data if you're unsure if it's a phishing site and if it's accepted, then you know it's a phishing site. If it's not accepted, it may be the valid site. Well, uh, that advice is certainly not good advice and it is another example why you shouldn't rely on this simple test. And then we have a spike in activity on an odd port, 52,869. Turns out the port 52,869 is used to send universal plug and play messages encapsulated in SOAP. One particular popular implementation of this comes from Realtek, which distributes a UPnP daemon mini IGD, which has a number of vulnerabilities. We captured in our honeypots a SOAP request that we believe is responsible for this increase in 52,869 scans. The SOAP request we captures attempted to take advantage of an older mini IGD vulnerability CVE 2014-8361. It uses the vulnerability to download and execute later a simple DDoS agent. While I haven't really gotten around to do a detailed analysis, the binary is readily recognized by antivirus engines. Even on my Mac, it did recognize it, even though it was actually not even an x86 uh, binary. While I haven't gotten around to do the full analysis, uh, there are sort of a couple of indicators of what it's doing. First of all, it's recognized as a DDoS agent. And a simple string analysis of the binary shows some commands that uh, match what we have seen in attacks against the Android debug bridge. That is yet another way to break into some of these devices. Now, the code that's then being executed will again download a scanner like the one we just looked at and also make sure the Android debug bridge is running as root. Now, with this limited analysis, it's hard to tell whether all of this runs as expected. First of all, the Android debug bridge, typically at least on any sort of recent version of Android, I believe requires that the user acknowledges on the device that the connection is being established. Maybe they just hope that the user will click on whatever pop-up they will see. And secondly, another option may be that the 
original UPnP attack actually hits an Android device. It's very possible that this daemon also runs on some Android devices and then the Android debug bridge is just enabled as sort of a secondary means to access this system. Now the scans have died down since their peak a couple days ago. The binaries for the most part are still available at least as of uh, today. So if you're into malware analysis, take a look and uh, maybe you will find something that I missed. Now, if you are into malware analysis and you happen to use Gmail to exchange samples uh, with other analysts, you may have seen on Gmail the warning that your account may be under attack from government entities. Now, Gmail does display this warning for a few years now, but apparently Google now rolled this feature out to its entire G Suite. G Suite is Google's commercial offering and typically this advanced detect attack detection feature doesn't just trigger on malware that you may be receiving in your email account, but also on things like fairly intense brute force attacks and such against your credentials. To not be left out, Microsoft also announced a feature called Account Guard, which it will make available specifically to organizations involved in this year's midterm elections in the US. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening. If you like this podcast, as usual, leave a comment with your podcast delivery service or just let a friend know about this podcast. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.